like you, cause nobody like you, Lord. Nobody, 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 nobody,
thank you. Again and again, we say thank you. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Father, this morning, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because our gathering is unto you. Thank you because when two or three are gathered, the Bible says you are there. So we, we know that you are here because we carry you in us. Thank you because, Lord, this morning as we share your word, that, Lord, you open our eyes, bring us deeper understanding. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. Amen. Don't worry. Two zero. It's not, some people collected five zero. Your is not as bad as that. Amen. We thank God it's no more than two. Amen. Praise God. Even Argentina, they scored them. So, uh, mm, nothing spoiled. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, we love our country any day. Praise God. All right. Um, so, on Wednesday, we looked at the three things that Paul was praying for us to understand from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. He said, because of having out of your faith and your love for the saints, faith in God and the love for the saints, I do not seem to make mention of you praying always that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, you may realize, you may come into cognizance of one by one, what are the hope, what is the hope of his calling? Then what are the riches of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us that believe? And we looked at this extensively on Wednesday, that the hope of the believer is not in material things. Jesus did not die so that he can have money to buy cars. Jesus did not die so that he can have enough money to build houses. Jesus did not die so that he can have babies. No, those things are good. They can be off shots, but that is not the reason why he came. He came so that we might have the hope of eternal life. So the believer has hope. He is not going to have hope. He has hope. Hope is confident assurance. So the believer knows that if Jesus comes today, he's going to heaven. He knows that already. He's not trying to make it. Why? Your salvation gives you that hope. And we understand the fact that the riches of his inheritance in the saints is not just what we have in him, but the fact that God sees us as his own inheritance. We have become God's personal property, that God is so much interested in us. So man that was insane, God looked at him as someone so important as to give his only son to redeem us. So you do not pay a price a huge price for what is not valuable to you. It is has to be valuable. So the fact that Jesus or God, and like what Pastor Bayo said some time ago, maybe about a year ago when he was here, he said when Jesus died, God became bankrupt. Why? That was the only thing he had. It is not the throne that makes God God. It is Christ. And when God gave his only begotten son, God became empty. So you will not empty your treasury for what is not important. That shows you the value that God places on you. That I, I am I'm ready to give my only son for you. So it shows that we are very valuable to God and we are God's own inheritance. We are God's own people. We are God's own property. First Peter 2 and I says, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. The Bible says you have been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light that you can proclaim his praises. And verse 10 says, verse 10, very important, it says, Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now has obtained mercy. So you were not a people of God before. You were out of the commonwealth of God, but God said, no, this person has to come in. So he brought you in. Praise God. It says, blessed be God who has qualified us. You did not meet up, but it's, you upgraded your marks. So because we are his inheritance, because we belong to him, all that he has belongs to us. It's just automatic. Why? We have been brought in by adoption into God's family. 
Now are we the sons of God. Amen? Now are we, behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us, 4 John chapter 3 verse 1, that we should be called the sons of God. Amen? So we have been adopted into the family. So by that adoption, it means that we belong to God. And belonging to God means that all that God has belongs to us. Amen? So I have a child. That child was born by me. The child did not walk into the family. I deliberately gave birth to a child, isn't it? Now, that child belongs to me, bears my name, and the day I go, all that I have goes to that child. Why? The child is my child. It is also my heir. Do you understand? So, we are God's people. We are God's children. Automatically, all that God has belongs to us. And we are not waiting for him to die. Why? He will never die. Praise God. Somebody say, I am God's property. Amen. And we look at the fact that what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. The word towards means in and for us. In other words, the power of God is available for the believer, is also resident in the believer. So, Bible says it was this power that raised us from the dead because Jesus had died. The enemy thought he had won the battle, but God's power by his spirit came into that grave and released him from the power of the grave. Meaning that no matter the challenge the believer is facing, God's power is available to deliver you. Not just that, God's power is also resident inside you and can be brought out to make things happen. So God stretches his power towards us and he also works in us. These are the three things that Paul wants us to know. See, a knowledge of these three facts will liberate your life, will make you live the Christian work effortlessly. So this morning, we want to take it a bit further. We want to paint the picture of the man in Christ. We want to paint the picture of the man in Christ. What does the man in Christ look like? The greatest injustice you can do to a man is to change his perception of who he really is. Amen? Have you noticed that if you watch most of this Western news, when they want to talk about Nigeria, they don't go to places like Banana Island. They don't go to places like Kui. Why they go to, they go to the slum? It's a deliberate attempt to make you know that you are poor. To make you know that you are not first class citizens. To make you understand that you are below. And when you keep looking at that picture, all of a sudden, something is set in your subconscious. Are you on point? And that is why some children, no matter how much potential they have, they might not amount to anything. Not because they don't have the potential, but because wrong picture has been painted. And a wrong picture will over time become your norm. So, for a lot of us, we have been painted wrong picture. Only God knows why. And then those wrong pictures have been formed in our subconscious that unknowingly the wrong picture now dictates our life. Amen? Amen. So we have been told things like, God does not like you. We have been told things that God hates you. Do you understand? A lot of things that, see, you cannot go to a church and every time you hear messages of your inadequacies, in the bid of the preacher to make you feel sorry, you cannot make anybody feel sorry. It is only God that convicts of sin. Yes. But we want to make you feel sorry. We want to make you cry. We want to make you walk out of the church and everybody is looking morose. So the preacher has to come with a hard message that will break you, that will make you understand that you are not there yet. And that you will never be complete listening to that every time of your life. Once in a while, the beat by could shape, but that is not a diet you want to live on forever. Amen. Why? You will never get to the place where you think you measure up in God. You will always be at the mercy of God. So every day, the reason why you are doing is that God just had mercy on you for just one extra day. He can kill you. So we have been served the picture of a bipolar God. One morning is happy, and that morning is angry. One moment is throwing out gifts, and that moment is calling everybody. No. So we want to paint the right picture today looking at the world together what will the right perception do to you your correct perception of your identity in christ jesus will help you know who you are and help you live in the realization of that life amen 
So when you see a child who is being told you are the best, you can do it. No, you are. As a matter of fact, you, 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 I was saying something on, was it yesterday, um, on, the, on the couple's page while the, while the, um, I think they played Argentina yesterday. Sorry, we are in that season, so they are good examples. Is that okay? Now, for example, Nigeria is going to play Argentina. Somehow, in the subconscious of our players, Messi is better than us. Isn't it? They are going to the field without mentality. That, that means that before you ever kick the first ball, in your heart, we are only coming up. Messi, do you understand? So you are already defeated before you kick the first ball. Well, your subconscious makes you respect the person as better than you are. So you do have a competitive advantage. Psychologically, you have been broken. You're only going to fulfill physical exercise. But when you understand that, no, he's a player, I'm a player. He has two legs, I have two legs. He has skills, I have skills. We are going to get there and slug it out. That was what David knew. When David went to face Goliath, it was not about his stone. It was first his attitude. It's also called the spirit the attitude of faith. It was first and foremost his attitude, not his fighting skills. Attitude will strengthen your skill. He saw him. I said, no, who is this? He had not shown anything. He was speaking for several days and everybody was paralyzed. Until a man that knew his capacity in God came on the scene. He said, who is this? I will bring you down. Now, you don't even look at your signs. Amen? But when you have the correct mentality, when you are faced with a challenge, you don't size your challenge. Why? You size yourself. The more you size yourself, the more you magnify yourself inside of yourself. You become bigger than the problem. You think Ronaldo looking that is a joining to Christ. In Christ means we have come into Christ. Now, it is two dimensional that makes it very, very complete. Christ is in you, you are in Christ. Christ is in you, you are in Christ. Christ is in you, you are in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 prays in a better way. It says you have been baptized into Christ. The word baptism means you have been immersed. You have been submerged such that you are fully filled with him. Amen? So like I gave an example, don't mind the mirror. If you took a white towel and you put it in a green dye and you submerge it in the dye, by the time you bring out that towel, it's no more green, it's no more white. It has taken up the identity of the dye. Why? The dye has entered every fiber. So it's now become, it's no more a white towel, it's now what? A green towel. So when you got saved, you came into Christ and you're coming to Christ it means you have been joined unto Christ. You are not two different entities. You have become one. Amen? The same way when, we are, when people get married, they tell them two. As, uh, we, have, we are no more two. You are now what? One. Whatever God has joined together. So you bear the same name. You have a common pulse. Everything common goal. Why you have been joined. Two people from different identities have, been come, to, have come together as one in marriage union. I was together. So that's what happens to you when you got saved. You do not have a different life from Christ. You have been joined unto Christ and both of you have now become what? One. You are Christ now. Amen? You are what? Christ now. So anyone who is joined, if this is not understood, then you cannot go forward. Amen? For he that is joined to the Lord is one, one, the same with him. So when you look at me, the person you see is who? Christ Jesus. I am Christ. I am Christ. Amen. 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 To some people, that's a blasphemy. Even, even the people that deceive understand this. Jesus said, some will come in my name and they will say, I am Christ. And people will believe them. They will not mention Christ. They will not throw the name. Like most of us try to throw the name in prayer. No. They come and say, I am the Christ. And people will believe them. Now, so why will those who have been made Christ not believe that they are Christ? Wow. So that when you get to the office, I am Christ. When you are playing a situation, I am Christ. When you are playing your business, I am Christ. I am not a follower. I am Christ. I am not a fan. 
Facebook fan, no. I am Christ. Why? We have been joined together. We have become one indivisible entity. So that when you have this mentality, you don't just remember Christ when you come to church. Why? He has become a part and parcel of your everyday living. When you sleep, you are Christ. When you are in the bedroom, you are Christ. When you are driving, you are Christ. In the manual um, tricycle, you are Christ. In the classroom, you are Christ. When you are tapping your computer at work, you are Christ. When you are exchanging cash with a customer, you are Christ. The situation does not make you Christ. Do you understand? It is not a certain situation that when we come to church, that's when we remember that we are born again. No. It's a life that we have 24-7. It's our natural habitat. Hallelujah. Amen? For a lot of people, we only remember these things when we are coming to church. Yes. So we just show that we are going to a holy place. No, you are the only blessing. Yes. On the job that makes child holy. It is you that come into this tent that makes the tent holy. Yes. Amen? Any point? Someone say, I am, I am. one Christ. Christ. We, are Christ. we are not different. We are just one entity. Amen? So anyone that is joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone. <laughs> The new has come. So nobody has the right to hold me down to a life that God has deleted. A second slide. So let's start. So the man in Christ. Number one point. He is a brand new creation and has what? No past. See, most of us still have issues with this. Yes, we say it. But, yes, there's no past. There's no past. We say it. But in reality, we don't believe it. If you do believe it, you will not refer to somebody that you knew before who is now saved in the light of what he or she was before. Yeah, true. Amen? If you really know this. Ah, Brother Peter, I'm, I am Sister Brother Mossy. Sir, so, Brother Brother Mossy, Sister Mossy. You don't know that sister? prostitute sister that gave her life two weeks ago in church. <laughs> that person that was a prostitute died. So, if you are still referring to a dead person, that means you don't know the new person. Amen? You don't have any past. The devil should not sell the story of the reason why you are suffering this is because of what you did in the past. If God is not a liar, your past does not exist. Yes. If you can call your past, God lied. Why? It's a brand new. Old is gone. Old is gone. So when people talk about your past, and you are, you, are, you see, some of us will say, hey, I confronted it. Now, I, I, I did abortion before I got saved. Now I'm saved. Somebody is now talking about the fact that that lady committed abortion five years ago, and then he's paining you. You say, oh, you don't know anything. Well, I say, okay, yes, abortion. That person died. This is a new me. This is a new me. There is no record of my past. Open the presence of God, you won't find it there. Hey. Somebody said, God took my sins. He threw it in the middle of the sea and put a signboard, no fishing. Yeah. You can't dig my past. Why? I don't have a past. You can't tell a brand new child, say, I was yesterday. You just give back to your child, say, I was yesterday night. He didn't have a yesterday night. A new life has begun. So when you got saved, a new life started. So nobody can hold you down to a past life. The person that committed all those offenses died. A new person was raised with Christ. This is the identity you must have. Or else, once the devil can throw guilt of past sin into your heart, it will break you down. Number one, your prayer life will go down. So you, you two, people are lifting hands, you are lifting hands. Remember on campus, all the girls you slayed, all of a sudden, your holy hands... Don't you know? How will you have a child? All the girls you committed a portion for on campus, you now want to have a child. You cannot. You are not. Amen? Let the devil know that the person that did that died. This new person never touched a girl before. And that is the truth. I'm not psyching you up. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. If the scripture is true, except God lied. Because I'm promising everything on what God said. Except God lied. He is a brand new. What is new? He's not refurbished. You know in Nigeria we buy fairly used cars. We paint it say first grade. This one is first grade. If you see the, the seats, 
It's clean. The engine is clean. Engine that they just washed. Clean. Maybe you just need to change the beam, change the thyroid. Then just change the, the headlamp. That's the only problem. That's not new. Why? Because Nigeria, our definition of new is not proper. Fairly used is new to us. Fairly new. You, you now grade new. No, there's no grade of new. New is new. <laughs> the Lord will take you to tear rubber level. Amen. That you enter into the shop, you pick, and you're the one disagreeing the line of it. Hey. Amen. You go to buy TV from LG or wherever, you are the one bringing out of carton. Amen. Not the TV that has given somebody the problem and they now fix the tube in it. You now go and buy it and say, I bought TV. Well, because that's a definition of new, refurbished, repackaged. That's not what the scripture is saying. It's not talking about refurbished people. It's not talking about repackaged people. It's talking about brand new, newly created. A new life started. Let that sink. Number two. Number two is one an imperfect union with Christ. I've talked about it. Is one an imperfect union with Christ. Number three. He has the exact life of God, the very life of God, at work on his inside. As the Father has life in himself, he has also given life to the Son. Amen? So, if you are saved, you have the exact... To some people, that's a blasphemy. How can you equate me with God? No, I'm not equating you God with God. God equated you with himself. Amen? God did it. Ephesians chapter 2 says, you, while you were dead, he quickened you. He talked about the fact that all the things we did and then were by rotting of disobedience. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy? But God, who is rich in mercy? Extravagant love. What did he do? He made you alive in Christ. Not just that, he elevated your status. So he gave you what he has. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So maybe somebody has a sickness and then has no blood. And I now say, okay, can you donate blood for that person? And I donate my blood for that person. What's in that person? What's in that person now? My blood. The same blood I have. What God gave you is not another life so that you can be inferior. He gave you his own life so that it can be Exact, 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 exact. So if it is the exact life, then my life cannot be lower than God, is it? Is it? It can't. If I bought this phone, this is Infinix something something, Infinix Hot. Now, everyone that buys this same brand of phone has the same thing. Yes or no? Yes, sir. I cannot have Infinix Hot. You have Infinix Hot. And you own us on future, but does not have. Hmm. It's not possible. It's not. it's not possible. It's not possible. If it is God's life, then every quality God's life has, you have. I got a point? If it is God's life, it's another life. Oh. If it is God's life, then you have exactly what God has. Amen? And that's why you can be in perfect sync with him. Why? You have the same, you are in the same format. Somebody say, I have, I have the Zoe, Zoe life, life of God, of God in, me. in me. So when you get to the office, don't just think you have this life in church. So don't limit your life to the four walls of the church. No. It's not a life you experience when you come to church. And when you come, go to office on Monday, it's a different life. No. And that's why I tell people, you cannot have two different lives. Business life, family life, church life, party life. You have scattered yourself. Amen? You have one life. In party, I'm spiritual. I have life of God. At home, I have life of God. In my office, life of God. When I'm driving, life of God. I don't just have life. I don't pick it up at the gate of the church. Amen? And I drop it and say, when, on Wednesday or Sunday, when I come, I pick it up again. No. It's a life I go around with. It's just my natural life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next one. By virtue of the life of God, he has the very nature of God in him. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 that we have become partakers, sharers, participators in the divine nature of God. So, if God is wise, can I be stupid? 
Amen. So that's because they are not stupid children of God. They are only children of God who have refused to exercise their wisdom. Amen. Not all of God is stupid. They have just refused to exercise the wisdom of God inside of them. If God is wise, I am wise. If God is creative, I will be talking about this in July, from July downwards. If God is creative, you as a child of God have to be creative. You are creative. And you must bring that creative tendencies to bear. Amen? You're only pulling out of yourself. God tried that with Adam. Created everything. God said, see, before God created, God had the picture in his mind. Yes or no? Yes or no? So God created according to the picture he had in his mind. After God created, he said, Adam, come and name the pictures I have in my heart. And when Adam named, the name Adam gave them was exactly the picture God had in his mind. God is one color you know in my mind. Actually, it should be a zebra. So whether I take your own or take my own, everything God Adam said was in sync with what God was thinking. Yes, sir. As God was making a lion, lion was in his heart. So when Adam said this one, what should we name this? Lion. Exactly what was in my heart. Amen. The same nature, the same format. The same nature, the same format. Everything he named them was accurate. I got a point. I got a point. So, as God is creative, everyone who is born of God is creative. You cannot go to office with a dumb head and heavy mouth of tongues. No. If your mouth is heavy in tongues, your brain should be functional too. I got a point. Creative. So that at work, you are creating things. You are making things happen at work. Why? The life of God is being a sahid should not be doing better than you at work. Except you are denying the life of God inside of you. Each time it's management meeting, you have nothing to say. When it's time to pray for the company, your tongue is loud just. But when it's time to make contribution and management, you say, I don't know. Mr. Anyenka, what are you saying? I don't know. The Lord will help us. No. The Lord should not help us. All you should say, give me some minutes. Go into the toilet. How did say, I don't know. I don't know. What did Joseph know? What should we do here? What should we do here? King, look for a man who is wise. If we save 20% in time of um, plenty, we would have more than enough in time of... What did the king say? There is no man that is discreet as that. What will be said about you at work? I don't know the kind of life you carry to work with. Said, in whom is the spirit of the gods? That was an unbeliever king recognizing spirit by speech, not by tongue, recognizing spirit by a solution that the guy was bringing out. That this kind of solution don't come from anywhere, it does not come from books, it comes from the spirit. No man, this is the, this is the spirit of God at work. This is not Ava, this is not Lagos Business School. This is the spirit of God at work. The spirit of God is higher than any school. What the Spirit of God does is to take the materials the school gave you and concoct something bigger out of it. A creative, how is creative? You are not trying to be righteous, be made righteous. Righteous, that's not what we do, is who we are. Yes, sir. We only do who we are, isn't it? Yes, so it is not the doing that makes us, it is the making that makes us do. Do you understand? So the man who is saved is righteous. Is not living righteous that makes him righteous. It is his nature of righteousness that makes him live right. Amen? So that is why a man who is not saved will struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle. Myself, I was talking yesterday in the house, and you're saying that, can you remember, remember the, when we were in the, my former, former, former church, that the pastor was always talking about fornication, fornication, don't fornicate, don't fornicate, you too, don't have the nature to do otherwise. So they can't help themselves. Amen. If, see, tell a sinner don't fornicate. There's nothing he cannot. It is nature. Tell a dog not to bark. It's punishment. His nature is fornication. His nature is stealing. It is part of his being. The only thing is change this operating software. That is all. So don't put, don't give him problem. Why? If we bring him to church and paint him in the church coloration, he will still commit fornication. No? It will be a fornicating chorister, a fornicating usher, a fornicating protocol, a fornicating kappa, a fornicating pastor. Why? 
I will not get to heaven. As a matter of fact, it is more not sitting to God. Trying to live righteous angers God more than living in sin. Do you understand that? Why? You are now trying to walk to bring righteousness by the works of the law. There's the righteousness by the works of the law. There's the righteousness of faith. Yes, sir. Amen? What these guys were doing, they were not going by faith. They were trying to use works. To live righteous. I pay my tithes. Works. Is tithe bad? No. But tithe can be paid as an act of faith. I fast always. Works. Is fasting bad? No. Fasting can be born out of faith. I serve in church. Works. So you are now using your, what you do as a basis of what God should respond to you. That is works. It should be done out of faith. I don't point. So you are not trying to live righteous. That is who you are. Amen. Let's go on. Let's go on. Time is going now. He has the life of God in his body, enjoys natural rejuvenation. Amen. Now, this is also important. The life of God is not just what we have in the spirit, it can be from the spirit to the soul and to the body. Amen. Such that your body also enjoys that life of God. Are you on point? Rejuvenation is part of the life of God. Do you understand? That your body enjoys divine health is higher than divine healing. You can get to a point when you understand that you can never fall sick. Yes, I was shocked when Papa Egi was saying something like, the last headache I had was in 1940 something. This was like 2000 and something. Can you go? The last headache I had was in 1940 something. I'm like, that's about 50 something years ago. Not even a dick. It's a function of, it's not lucky. Hey, those people are lucky. See, when we have such testimony, when people have not used drugs in 20 years, say, ah, oh, these are lucky people. They are not lucky people. They are only lighted people. They have come into an understanding of the life that's at work in them that that life now takes over their being externally. That you walk into a place and there's an aura of God around you, it's a knowing. You don't conjure it. You know it. So, sickness cannot thrive in that body. Now you understand. First Peter 2.24. Give it to me. First Peter 2.24. So, the life of God can be brought in the body. Before you go, okay, stay there. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, he said, The life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. So, the life of the flesh can be lived by faith in the Son of God. So you can understand and have enough faith to know that even my body cannot suffer corruption. Mm. It's an understanding. Who himself bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we haven't died to sin may live for righteousness by stripes you are healed. Now listen to me. Dying to sin is not about the body. Dying to sin is about your spirit man. Amen? Living for righteousness is not about your body. It's about your spirit man. But also, what happens in the spirit with understanding can be translated. Amen? If by the spirit, your flesh can be brought under control, you don't commit sin, that same spirit can also make sure that your body does not fall sick. Amen? So, when sickness tries to knock at your door, you have two options. To open up and welcome by relieving and don't pay attention to it. So the way it came, the thing goes. So the life of God can, go back to our slide, can rejuvenate our body and should rejuvenate your body. Amen. From today, sickness cease to exist in your bodies. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone who has any doctor's diagnosis that is negative, it is cancelled in the name of Jesus. Praise God. See, when you understand this, you will not be running from pillar to post. From one matter to another. Amen? You can stand your ground. Why? This body is the temple of the living God. Whatever wants to defile that temple, sickness is a defilement. It's not just only immorality. Sickness is a defilement. And God has the right to destroy it. Amen? Okay? So, in his body and enjoys natural rejuvenation. Next part is accepted in the beloved. Somebody say, I have been accepted in the beloved. I don't do anything to be accepted. He saw me and accepted me. 
He saw me, embraced me. As well, it was that acceptance that made him to wash me. Amen? I didn't get washed to be accepted. I got accepted to be washed. Are you a point? So I didn't do anything. I said, hey, hey, because this is what we have been talking about. You are now clean. Oh, yeah, you are now my son. No. God said, no. Yeah, yeah, you have been trying. I can see that you are trying to live holy. I can see that you are not lying anymore. I can see that you are not doing all those bad things anymore. Now you are my child. No. God said, even when you did those things, for God commended his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, amen, not when we change our mind, he loved us in the sin and his love brought out of sin. That's why I tell husbands, you can love your wife out of the things you don't like. It's not by magnifying her fault and complaining about it. Love her out of it. You can love your man out of that nonsense you don't like in his life. Not every time, yeah, yeah, complaining. No, you will push him deeper. Amen? You push him deeper into those things you don't like. Love him out of it. Love her out of it. Love will break anybody's heart anytime. Unfeigned love. Unfeigned love. Amen? Unfeigned love. We saw it last Sunday when the women were acting their drama. You know this? Love. She was complaining the man was getting worse. Now, when she began to display unconditional love, it's not based on what you do to me. I will play my part, whether you play your part or not. It's my covenant for you. Do you understand? All of a sudden, the guy comes to realization, why am I doing all this nonsense? Do you understand? So you have been accepted. You have been accepted. Go on. Next one. He cannot commit sin. Amen? He, do, he cannot what? He cannot commit sin. Sin cannot be a part of his life. When you are saved, sin was expunged from your system. Okay, pastor. But, hey, I know myself, oh, Yes, I know you because I know myself too. But I have made some mistakes. Oh, you call it mistakes. Good. We're on the same page. Mm-hmm. Why? The child of God does not make sin his lifestyle. Yes, sir. A child of God may fall into sin. Do you understand? But that is not his appetite. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I get my point? I think I gave the example a few weeks ago. I'm a child of God that cannot commit sin. So somehow I fell into fornication. And Lord, I'm sorry. Why? God put his prince out of you. You know where you have done something that is wrong. Amen? You know you have done something that is wrong. All of a sudden, you know, oh, what I did was wrong. What should you do? You confess. Lord, I'm sorry. And then life goes on, isn't it? Now, I confess on Monday, Tuesday, I do the same thing. I confess on Tuesday, Wednesday, I do the same thing. I confess on Wednesday, Thursday, I do the same thing. You are not born again. You are only trying to use God. My pastor said something that some people even go go advance notice. I'm going to see no. Forgive me in advance. <laughs> Amen. That is taking grace out of context. The believer does not live a life of sin, even though he may make a mistake. So first John chapter one, chapter two, verse one. First John chapter two, verse one says, "If first John two one, first John two one, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin." And if, not when, if it ever happens, anyone sins, we have a, an advocate, a lawyer, somebody that speaks on our behalf. Because when you make that mistake, the devil runs to God and accuses us, brother, can you see? And all of a sudden, Jesus stands up, I'm speaking for him. Why? You are not covering your sin. You are saying, Lord, yes, I'm guilty. And the lawyer says, okay, I'll speak for you, don't worry. But when you now say, no, I'm not guilty, oh. the lawyer says, I can't talk, oh. better tell me the truth. Amen. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Jesus Christ, the righteous. So the believer does not commit sin. He does not have the software of committing sin. Why? He has the software of righteousness. Yes, sir. When he makes mistakes, he does not justify his mistakes. He owns up. He that confesses his sin will prosper. He that covers it is the one that will not prosper. Amen. Next point. He cannot be condemned even if he is. Do you understand? God will never condemn you. Who is it that condemned? That condemned? That condemns? Is that not Christ Jesus? He does not condemn. Even the woman that was caught in the very act, Jesus didn't condemn her. Amen. Because some of us are in church, we are easy to condemn people. 
somebody makes a mistake, we have condemned him. I, I have done that, brother. The day he entered our church, I saw the fornication in his eyes. I saw it. I, I knew. It's just a matter of time. What I'm saying? Ah, I think Kofan Le. Let me explain that to you. Somebody would have said that. You know divination when you go to Babalawo and they put those things. They have not even started the the inquiry from Oracle. We are seeing the results. Amen. That is not the attitude of God. Amen. You cannot be condemned. Why? God loves you. His love is unconditional. Does God permit our errors? No. And that is why he gave you the spirit to put you in check. But when you make a mistake, God does not. So we have been painting the picture that when you make a mistake, God has just been waiting for that mistake. Where are you at the budget? You know, there are some fathers. You know, there are some fathers. They are just waiting for you. Just make that mistake. You are, in, you, you are dead. Just know that you are dead. You know, some of us are like, you are there now. You wait about three, four. Say, say, just do something wrong. You are dead. Say, Tia Ti Bajeleji. Tia Ti Bajeleji. I've been waiting for you to see. See, I, I have wondered, my hand has been painting me. I've not been telling anybody this. Now that I have seen that, yo, lie down there. That is not God. Even in that your mistake, God still loves you. It is his love that brings you to repentance. Amen. God does not condemn you. Why? What he sees is that he doesn't even see you. He sees Christ. Hallelujah. If God is an angry God, then why did Jesus die? His blood has been wasted. Why? It is his blood that pacified God. When the blood was taken above the mercy seat, God was pacified. So God was really angry. That means that he didn't count the blood of Jesus. God will not condemn you, but God will not permit that nonsense. Amen? So the fact that God condemn you does not mean, okay, I can go on so I just live anyhow. No, that is taking grace out of context. Grace has the power of endless life. Grace has the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that cuts off the habit of sin. Is that a good point? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Let's take it together. Romans 8 verse 1. Romans 8 verse 1. I want us to read it loud together. One, two, three, go. Therefore now, no condemnation to those In the original manuscript, the second part is not that the, the only thing in the original manuscript is there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. They cannot be condemned. Nothing can condemn you. No devil can condemn you. No man can condemn you. Why? You have been bought. Hallelujah. Amen? Take this out of your head that when you make a mistake, God cleans your name from the book of life. Then when you are right, he writes it again. Any mistake, he wipes it off. You are right, he writes it again. Oh, no, I'm going to say, Angel, you have been detailed to him. Just be watching him. When he makes a mistake, write it. Remove his name. Sharp, 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 sharp. He has repented. Okay, write it back. He lied again. Remove it. He has okay, write it back. Even that page would have been torn. You know the way you erase that page? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You repented because your name was written. Amen. It was not a reporter that repented that wrote your name. Your name was included. That's why you repented. You only responded to what was written. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So you cannot be condemned. Bible says, even if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Do that guilt. You know. I'm breaking some religious mindset, isn't it? This attitude of, hey, I committed sin. Three weeks, you are still begging God for forgiveness. You don't know broke one here. Three weeks, you are begging you. I lied. Oh, three weeks, I'm still crying. Three weeks, I've locked myself inside the room. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I've tried one day. Second day, oh, Lord, I've come again. I am a worthy. I am useless. Only your mercy. Third day, one week. Two weeks, three weeks. How uh -uh, long, kilo day? Why are you so difficult like that? And that is not God. The prodigal son was going to rehearse his life. The father was not around to him. Yes, sir. The father is not waiting for you. Before you say, Lord, I am saying, I have been waiting for that. Yes. I have been waiting for that. Yes. I have been waiting for that. That's why I gave him my Holy Spirit. So that he can bring me back to you quickly. You understand? 
the hands of the Lord are not too uh, short. His ears are not too heavy. But your iniquity has kept it far from you. That was under the old covenant. Now, God has been brought near by the blood of the Lamb. God is not far from us. He's the one running to you. You are not the one running to God. God is the one running to you. He's the one paying the price. 2 Corinthians 5, 5, 19 says, It was God in man reconciling. God is the one looking for reconciliation, not you. It, was, it is God that is saying, you see, you see, this son, see what I've done for you. I thought, what should pay the price? Is it not you? God said, you say, don't worry. You are the one that said, don't worry. I will die. I will die to bring you back. You will not be begging that same God for three weeks. He will still be saying, no, no, no. You must show that you are. It, it was in the Old Testament they tore their clothes for God to read. They will put ash on themselves. They say, you must to, to show you are serious. Take three weeks for repentance. Ah. See that's about the line three weeks, Uncle? <laughs> See, bye. Amen. So God will not condemn you. But God will not permit your iniquity. Amen. He does not justify our mistakes. He helps us out of it. Next point quickly. Time is gone. Let's just rush through the other points. Are you blessed? Yes, sir. Are you blessed? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go, just go through the other points. See, there's nothing as understanding the love of God. The fatherhood of God and the love of God. They are basic things that the real must... Okay? is loved by God unconditionally. God's love is not on what you do, based on what you do. God loves you unconditionally. It is this love of God that affects what you do. Amen? And if God loves unconditionally, God expects you to also love people unconditionally. That you don't relate to people based on what they do to you or not. Amen? Next point. He is blessed and cannot be under the curse. The man in Christ is what? Blessed. He cannot be under the curse. Christ redeemed us from the curse. Christ redeemed us from the curse. So you cannot be cursed by anybody, the curse of sin or the curse of life. Amen? Curse of sin was what God pronounced upon Adam. Curse of life comes, or curse of the law comes with trying to obey the law. But since we are no more under that, we are now blessed perpetually. Perpetually blessed. Amen? I don't care what you have your account. You are blessed. It your account does not satisfy blessing. It is the operational, oppression of the blessing that makes your account funded every time. Is that a good point? So, you are not cursed. Somebody say, I am not. Not cursed. I am blessed. Next point, quickly. He is alive in Christ Jesus. You that was dead in your trespasses, he has made what? Alive. You are no more dead. To be dead means to be separated from God. To be alive means to now be brought into union with God. Amen? So that his life lightens your life. Amen? So, you are alive in Christ Jesus. Next point. He is seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And this is very, very important to understand your sitting position. Your sitting position is very, very important. Why? It is that, that place you control what happens here on earth. Amen? It is from your place of sitting that you control. That sitting is not sitting to enjoy. That sitting depicts authority and dominion. That's it. That's so when you are seated, Christ seated means he's in authority and dominion. You sitting means that you are also in authority and dominion. Amen? So when you sit, you are in, you are in charge. When you understand that you are seated, it means that you understand your place of dominion and authority. Are we together? Now let's roll. Time is not, we still have quite a, a few. He is a citizen of heaven. He is not striving to make heaven. Amen? Because you are born to the kingdom. Amen? You are a kingdom citizen by salvation. Do you understand? You have become the heir of God. You have become the heir of God. You have become a partaker of his life. You have become a partaker of his nature. You have become a citizen of of heaven. So you are not striving for it. You got it by birth. Amen? I became a Nigerian by birth, isn't it? Yes, sir. I, so, but if I go to the U.S. now, I need to file for paper to get the clean card, isn't it? I have to do some things to get the clean card. Why? That is not my country. I was not born there. 
So if I want to get citizenship of a country I was not born, I have to file documents. But a country that I am born into, as they born you like this, as you open your colloquial eyes, never taste like you know you have arrived. You just know you have arrived. I said, I said why they are doing your prayer? The other is night is going over. You know you have arrived here. Uh. Baptism. <laughs> Praise God. Bible says he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. And he has translated us, conveyed us to the kingdom of his dear son. What is that kingdom? Hellfire. It's heaven. He took out of darkness. So when you are out of sin, the next place to be is heaven. So it's not something you are looking forward to. It's something that started from now. Yes, but we perfected in glory. Some people are looking forward to that heaven. No, heaven has started here. Yes, Why, when God moved inside of you, heaven moved inside of you. Mm. It says the kingdom is inside of you. Mm. You carry heaven inside of you. Mm. So when you understand that you can make your environment heaven on earth. Are you on point? So stop striving to do it. No, it's not by power nor by might. Next point. Quickly, is a partaker of the commonwealth, the inheritance of the saints. You are a partaker, a sharer, a participator, an associate in the inheritance. So, like we said when we started, what God has belongs to you. The fact that you are a part of the family, you have a share. Amen? You have a share. If a man has five children, when he dies, all the five children, except for some people who are greedy people. Isn't it? It should be Oh, our father has five verses. Let's take one, one, isn't it? Somebody said, no, I want two. So somebody should not have one. In the kingdom, we do have greed. Whatever our father has, all of us have right to, isn't it? So we are partakers. We are partakers of the commonwealth. It's our commonwealth. And the kingdom is a leveler. In the kingdom, one is not richer than the other. The only thing that makes us look like that is the fact knowledge. Your ability to appropriate is different. So I can appropriate more, you appropriate less. And it looks as though you are poor than me. No. When your knowledge deepens, you, trust, you also appropriate as much as I can appropriate. Amen? In the kingdom, everybody has 100%. We don't share 1%. Say 100% of us, 1%. No. 100%, 100%. Next point. Next point. is completely delivered and is no more in what? Bondage. You have been delivered. You have been delivered. Colossians 1.13, you have been delivered. So the believer cannot be in bondage. The believer cannot be inhabited by demons. The Holy Spirit cannot take one compartment and devil take another compartment. No. But the believer can be afflicted from outside. But the devil cannot live inside the believer with the Spirit of God. Both of them cannot coexist in, the, in one person. Amen. It is only one person at a time. But the believer can be afflicted from outside if he does what is not appropriate, number one, and if he does not have enough knowledge. The devil will taunt him from outside and he will think the devil is inside. Amen? So when there's a problem, the first thing you're saying is go for deliverance. And I'm saying from what? There's no demon inside of me, so I don't need to be delivered. What should you do? Take authority, not go for deliverance. Take authority. Stand your ground. And tell the devil, my life is a go, no going area for you. You take authority. Amen? Going for deliverance means you have accepted that there's a demon inside of you that has to be removed. If you take any thoughts of me, the only thing you take is the Holy Ghost. Because nothing I cohabit with him. But when the devil wants to afflict me on the outside, I take my stand in the name of Jesus and I take authority over that devil. And I tell him to get out of my environment. Is that okay? Okay. Next point quickly. I think we're almost there. He's anointed, and as the anointed is already resident in him, you are anointed, and the anointing of God is what? Resident in you. You are not looking for anointing. You are the anointing. All you need to do is tear it up. Some of us are going for anointing services looking for anointing. You have anointing already. The anointed one inside of you already. Brethren, Brethren, Bible told us that when God gave you the Holy Ghost, He gave you the complete Holy Ghost. He didn't give you 10%. Say, okay. By the time you pray more, I'll give you another 10%. The more you pray, 10%. Until one day you are prayed, God says you are 100%. No. Once you got saved, the Holy Ghost came inside of you 100%. It is your knowledge that helps you dig deep into the spirit that is upon you. So every believer is equally anointed. The difference is knowledge. Amen. Next point. He has the mind of Christ. You have the what? 
the mind of Christ. You are not going to have it. You already have the mind of Christ. Such that you think like Christ thinks. And when you can think like Christ thinks, you will act like Christ will act. Amen? So, your mind is the mind of Christ. When they look at you, the way Christ talks is the way you talk. When you have the same mind, your action will be the same. So, you are not trying to act like Christ. You are doing so because you have the same operational system. Next point. You are born of God. Amen? Somebody say, I am born of God. Born of God. It says they are not sex begotten. They are not flesh begotten. They are God begotten. God gave birth to you. God didn't need a woman. He's self-sufficient. Amen? God is neither male nor female. But he has breasts. The Bible says he's a multi-breasted God. God has womb. He says, I gave birth to you. God has eyes. He says, you are the apple of my eyes. God has hands. His hands can save. God has legs. His legs stays upon the earth as a suits too. God has yes, He can hear. So God self-impregnated himself to give back to you. When God was going to make other things, God spoke them out. When God was going to make you, he spoke to himself. You came out of God. Amen? You came out of who? God. And you cannot be less than him. Somebody say, I am yeah. one of God. Next point, I think we should be over now, isn't it? We are not true. Ah, Father, mercy, let's run. You are a king and a priest together. You are a royal priesthood. And Reynolds 5 times says, you will reign on the earth. You are not going to reign in heaven. You are reign start where? On earth. Amen? So you are both king and priest. Amen? Okay, next point quickly. I'm rushing now. You are what? You are a joint heir with Christ. Both of you share 100 percent Amen? With Christ. He cannot be separated from God. Why? You have already been brought into union. Amen? The only thing that can take you out of God is to say, is to renounce Christ. Amen? You cannot be separated from God. You and God have become indivisible entity. Praise God. You cannot be separated again. Next point. You have Christ as your advocate. You have looked at that. Next point. You have the Holy Spirit interceding through you. The Holy Ghost intercedes through you. Jesus intercedes beside the Father for you. The Holy Ghost intercedes through you. Through groanings that cannot be uttered. Through tongues. Amen? So when you are praying, the Holy Ghost helps you to pray. All right. Praise God. Next point. It is you now. I want to finish. That's all. Praise God. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Do you see your true picture? Now, let these things, they can give you the PowerPoint if you want. Let these things be sacrosanct in you. This is how to make your Christian work easy, interesting, and rewarding. When you understand these basics, the devil's lie will not again make you fidget. Are your point? The devil's lie will not make you feel inadequate. The devil's lie will not make you still feel that you are a sinner. The devil's lie will not make you feel incomplete. For you have been made complete in Christ. So lift up your hands and let's give God praise this morning. Lift up your hands and let's give God praise. I know who I am. I have prayed from the understanding of who I am in Christ Jesus. I have prayed from the understanding of who I am in Christ Jesus. The enemy does not rob me through ignorance anymore. It says my people are perished not because the devil is powerful, but because they are ignorant. Lord, thank you for bringing me into light of who I am in Christ Jesus, of what I have in him. Thank you because I operate by this on a daily basis. Thank you because I operate by this understanding. Shande koraga sa ki pragadish te ke de pragaga sosodia. Li kropashi kataya do so pragadia. Non de prokoso sopedia. Man kre ma so zo pranish ta hande. Man geto se ke praga soso pragadia. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise.
Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the very nature of God that is in us. Thank you because we are joined here with Christ Jesus. Thank you because we have the mind of Christ. We are not confused. We we'll bless you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to say something before we bring the service to a close. You know, pastors have been handing some series uh, 